Hey YouTube, AJ here. Next step in my hot rod project and a little um, test on the Harbor Freight trailer. Uh, we are in route, just started out, heading for Ohio. So we're gonna put about, hopefully, put about a thousand miles on the Harbor Freight trailer. Going up empty and then coming back uh, with my hot rod project. So my 1927, Model T Touring or Phaeton body, whatever you want to call it, and uh, the frame and a bunch of other crap for it. So, hopefully, this will be a successful test of my little trailer. It's been doing well so far, but uh, you know, this is going to be a long one. Wish me luck. Stop in Charleston. Um, meet a guy who had a Model A wishbone for sale. Stopped to take a look at it. He was asking 50 bucks for it. To be honest, I wanted to pay $50 for it. Um, eyes on the uh, for the kingpins did not look great. They needed a lot of work. But I ended up talking to the guy for about 45 minutes. Nice guy and just. A lot to talk about and got a lot in common jeeps and and uh hot rods and some other stuff so we we talked for a while and he ended up just giving it to me which is cool i would have paid maybe 20 for it but i mean yeah, nice of the guy to give it to me I, i'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth got a plan i think what i i don't think i'm gonna use it for my front end i think i want to get a better wishbone for my front end but the, um, I gotta think I can use it as a locating bar for my rear end, so we'll go for that route. Back to the drive. Got some work cut out for me today. Oh yeah, on the way up here, I stopped at Charleston, West Virginia, picked up this uh, Model A wishbone that I was telling you about yesterday. All right, put all the lights on so I can see better in this place. Up along the top there, when I was a kid, I collected beer cans. That tire actually came off of one of Jeff Gordon's cars. That's my eight point buck I shot when I was into hunting. That's the biggest one I ever got. But anyway, my beer can collection goes all back around there. My dad's little, got this little 1966 Suzuki. 
Suzuki? No, that's a Yamaha. I'm sorry. He, yeah, it's a Yamaha. So you get this little 66 Yamaha. All right. So here's my body, uncovered, cut into three pieces. Got some remnants of a critter's nest got in there. Oh. Overall, it looks like it fared okay. I don't think there's uh, much more rust on it than when I had it when I started. So moving forward. All right, so we are getting ready. We are, well, not getting ready. We are actually on our way back home to North Carolina. Got a trailer in tow. I forgot I was planning on taking some video as the trailer got loaded, but I totally forgot because I had, it was rushing to get a lot done. Had a short time to get all the stuff sort sorted through and loaded and but i got my little harbor freight trailer back there you can see the green tarp over the top of it it's pretty full it's probably pretty heavy we got 400 and some miles to drive with it so we'll uh hopefully everything will go good and we will arrive safely with no issues got uh mr floki here hey buddy Look over here. Come here. No, he's laying down. All right, so Mr. Floki doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> All right, anyway, we'll see if we can get Mr. Floki on camera here later. But for now, we're on our way. Okay, so we're two hours in roughly. Maybe a little more, I'm not sure. We are out of Ohio. We are on uh, 77 in West Virginia, heading south now. And uh, so far, the Harbor Freight Trailer seems to be doing very, very well. Um, honestly, pulling it through the back roads of Ohio and then onto the two lane freeway, byway, whatever you call them down there. And uh, for the most part, it's hard to tell it's even back there in terms of pulling. I mean, yeah, I can tell there's a little more drag on the Jeep in terms of weight. Um, might be front end of my Jeep might be just a little light, but not too bad at all. But uh, in terms of like the trailer moving me around or feeling like something's jerking back there, nothing. It's riding nice and solid. One thing is, it's like it's actually like through the back window, you can see the top of the load where the green tarp is. But like through the side windows, it's really hard, or the side mirrors, it's really hard to even see the trailer. You can barely catch a glimpse of the fenders. And it, it just, it's like there's nothing back there. So, look, he's riding nice and calm. He's, you know, good boy, yes he is. He's laying down right now. But, uh, yeah. Oh well. Okay, Floki and I are at Tamarack. Look, look, no, look, no, no. Okay, no, he's busy. He's seeing what all of everybody's doing. But anyway, Floki and I are at Tamarack. Uh, that's about, I think it's a little more than halfway to home, but uh, we're basically close to four hours in. Harbor freight trailer's going good. The bearings are not hot. Coming through the mountains, we be all good. Felt the weight a little bit going up the mountains, but not too bad. And the downshift a few times. Anyway, we're moving. The hole is tent there. Start the hole starting over here. I'm not fair too bad so far. He went to the bathroom, had some water. Ooh, good boy. Anyway, we're getting ready to pull out. Got the AC on. This should be our last long leg, and we're done. Just one stop trip. What do you think, Luke? You getting there? to flip over the ball 
or, or flip over my, well, flip the ball and flip my hitch in the receiver to get it higher. And gave it a nice, slightly nose down all the weight. You can see the front of the Jeep's pulled up, but all the weight's on the tongue there. Seems to be pretty well balanced, but it pulled very, very good. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take the tarp off here and, and unload it this week and show everybody all my hot, the stuff for my hot rod. But just talking about the trailer in general, pulled very well. Uh, I kept the times I did stop, I did feel the hubs to make sure, you know, nothing was getting hot and they were fine. Uh, most of the way, the first half of the way, I pulled it at 55 miles an hour. And then the second half of the way, I tried to keep it around 60, but I, I did I probably average closer to 62 on it. Um, and really the trailer, it, it just, what you didn't know it was back there. Um, I was just trying to be gentle on the tires, uh, basically, for that. They seem to have done very well. They don't look any worse for the wear. The center rib has the, I don't know, remember now if that center rib had any sipes in it or not. But otherwise they look really good. I, I don't think it did, but maybe I'll check some of my old pictures and see. But uh, yeah, I ended up, there were some times I got up in the 70s, uh, coming down some hills and I didn't want to, you know, hold on the brakes, but other, oh, all in all, um, it held up really good. Once I take the tarp off and unload it, I'll check it out and update you again. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick overview. trailer here before I unload it. I'm not going to film me unloading this entire thing. It's going to be a while. After I get it unloaded, I'll show you in detail more of the uh, key components of the hot rod that I got. But right now, talk about the Harbor Freight trailer. As you can see, I used a lot of straps. I'm just throwing them all on the floor for now. I'm not going to film me wrapping all those up. Anyway, so the Harbor Freight trailer, as I was saying, did really good. It's probably got capacity or more on there. Um, it doesn't really look it, but there's a lot of steel in that pile. Capacity on this trailer is supposed to be 1720. I'm pretty sure I've overloaded it twice now. This last time here was about 450 miles total. As you can see, there's part of my touring tub here. The guy I got this from cut it into three pieces. This is the rear section upside down here. Uh, you can see my frame rail sticking out. My frame, I took my frame apart, drilled out the cross members. Uh, I'm gonna be rebuilding the whole frame and boxing it some with another frame that I had. Inside here, doors for my tub are in there. I've got a dash panel here from a 59 Sprite that I'm going to be using. This fiberglass pieces are from a Jeep top that for another project I got coming up. This here is my basket for my hitch on my Jeep. I use the whole parts around. That was at my dad's. This is pretty awesome. My dad hit me up while I was up here. He's like, hey, do you have a band, porta band or a bandsaw? And I said, no. He goes, let me hook you up. Basically, he gave me a literally almost brand new porta cable band porta band in the box you know it's awesome what can i say you got tote here full of parts tote up in there full of parts this is a uh air tank out of an old airplane pretty cool i'll show that better later they got all kinds of steel and parts in these baskets oh uh, what else we got in there a couple motorcycle rooms I don't know if anybody can recognize what's in there, but that is an old Jeep grill that I'm gonna be making a light for our back patio out of. I got the headlight buckets and all that for that. I got a wooden toolbox I made in my shop class in like seventh grade or something. I'll be honest, this little bit, this is gonna be uh, kind of a mystery for me because I, I was loading everything so fast, I'm not sure what all I have in there. Oh yeah, I got my seven inch grinder. 
and a um, sawzall that was in there. You got all kinds of cross members and springs. I mean, you look down there, the spring packs are super heavy. So there's a lot of weight in here, and I, I'm just scratching the surface. So yeah, here's a here's a tailgate off of CJ that I had at my dad's place. I was originally going to make kind of like a fold down table out of the wall on that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it now. All in all, I mean, it fared very well. Handled the weight, pulled great. Um, everything's been working good so far. The one thing about my Harbor Freight trailer that I really don't like, and I'm gonna have to figure out something about that, that is the um, jack here. It really isn't working well in its current position. Like kind of trailer wants to tilt when it's on it and it doesn't want to roll and that thing still, even though I've cranked down those bolts, uh, these mounting bolts here like crazy, it's still moving around. Um, so I'm gonna have to do something with that yet to get that better. We'll see. I did consider mounting my spare tire on the tongue, but then I thought that would make it way too hard to fold and put away. So I probably won't be doing that. Um, but other than that, props, it pulled really good. Okay, so one issue I may have be having with the trailer, I gotta check on. I don't know what this is. Get this splatter, it looks like it's slung out. I'm not sure, but I think I slung out some grease. Uh, maybe as it got hot. Uh, it like got you know got maybe as it got hot it got um, thin enough that it was able to pressurize and squirt out of there. Um, seems kind of weird. Definitely feels like grease. Though. Um, maybe I had too much in the bearing. I don't know. I'm not super concerned yet. I will check on that. Nothing else, make sure the hub's full, re-grease it. Um, if one thing it's aggravating to see how that fitting is in there. It's turned toward the back of the hub, so it's hard to grease the backside. <laughs> Good thing I added the bearing buddies. I can grease from the front. But as you can see over here on this side, I don't have any issues like that. All right, so let's sum up. Basically, I put my little Harbor Freight trailer through a thousand mile stress test. Drove 450 miles ish, um, empty with uh, at moderate speeds like 55 to 60 at most, and then loaded it up. Let's be honest, overloaded it again and drove it back those 450 ish miles at a little bit higher speeds, sometimes hitting into the 70s. Um, I thought I had an issue when I got home and found um, grease on the inside of the rim of one of the wheels. I, at first I started to think, oh no, it's, you know, this is the first of the problems that are gonna start showing up on this thing. And then uh, fortunately when editing the video, I actually remembered that on the way up, I had had a strap in get loose and it wrapped itself really, really tightly around the axle tube right at that bearing seal. Um, I had to get a knife out and cut the strap and then pull it really, it took a lot of effort to pull it out and untangle it from the wheel and get it out of there. And um, I'm now thinking that that probably damaged the seal. So I'll, before I take it 
out on its next run, I will go in there and try to like reseat the seal as best I can on the wheel. I'll take it out. I'll see if it happens again. If not, great. We'll just keep going with that. And if it if it does spin some more grease out, well, then maybe I'm going to have to pull the wheel off and uh, put a new seal on it. But I'm pretty confident now in saying that the trailer had no issues. It's not Harbor Freight or the manufacturer's fault. That issue, I believe, was of my own making. So um, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. Um, got something to keep an eye on for the future. I have a few uh, little mods I plan on doing. Um, but yeah, other than that, Harbor Freight trailer is doing great. Till next time, YouTube. See ya.